Hey guys, welcome back to Oxygen Not Included, Clay's amazing space colony simulator extraordinaire. My name is Twitchy and we are playing the Spaced Out DLC, living on the LV426, a collection of asteroids out in the ferment, just floating around and we have got 12 duplicates trying to make their way into the future as comfortable as possible. Last time we got our gold supply up and running, we got ourselves a nice little cooling loop and enough gold in there that is cooling everything everything down getting dumped down here we've already made ourselves if I can find it here six and a half tons that is outrageous amounts of metal just spinning around and cooling everything down but today I have a bit of a bigger issue an issue that really we should have sorted out quite some time ago here on the asteroid of Turanu we have random randomers Erat and Honza three of my viewers that have been playing along for a little while now and we don't really have a good food source we started off with some bristle berries, ended up eating too much of our water, so we turned that off. And now I'm turning my attention to these long-haired slicksters here. They're a side product of our carbon dioxide consumption units down here. We had some slicksters. They're now making uh, molten slicksters, which create petroleum. Though we do appear to have lost our actual slickster population. Let, let's see if randomly... No, there's not one in there. That, that's a bit of a shame. I'll take the aluminium or oh, thank you, thank you. So most of this process is actually complete. Uh, there's a few things I want to put in place like over here I want to put down an incubator so we can keep the uh, the number of eggs turning over as quick as possible but then I want to make a kill chamber over here we have discovered thanks to this one down here that you cannot drown slicks so I think we're just gonna have to go with the age-old method of waiting them out uh, our duplicates last for a lot longer than the 150 days that these guys can survive for and during that 150 days I think they can go about making one uh, one one egg. Uh, so uh, this guy's glum. Uh, yeah, that, that's great. That's exactly what I wanted to show. Actually, when they're glum, they've not been groomed, and then when they're groomed, you can see their reproduction rate go shooting through the roof. So the guys in here will be producing an excess of babies compared to how long they live. They'll, they'll be making they'll be making a baby every nine days or so, uh, and you know they live for 150. That's that's a lot of babies being made. But if we take them out of there and put them over in their own a little unit, which I'm kind of waiting for someone to come along and do the, the work on. Uh, we can probably let them just starve to death. In fact, they won't starve to death. They survive off of oxygen, but we can let them just live their lives out doing their thing. And then when they die, we use the meat to make barbecue. That's my idea so far. As you know, my ideas very rarely play through as originally planned. So we'll see what happens. So we've got a waiting room being made down here, but I did notice that the water was not flowing into my oil well over here. So everything had kind of stopped rolling. I think that might have something to do with why the slicks aren't here. I mean, we weren't burning any petrol, so we probably weren't making any carbon dioxide. So we were probably starving them to death. Looks like we could have been starving them to death. Uh, hopefully, maybe we can transfer one of these up into the colder area and then it, then he'll drop a, a, a normal lava egg. That That would be great. That would be amazing. Uh, perhaps when this actually fills up, because currently it's 7 out of 8, but if it hits 8 out of 8 and we start moving people over here, this is where all our extra critters go. Ooh, we're going to have to turn this down. No, I've turned them off here. Okay, that's that's good. Good thinking. Because uh, we don't want the long-haired slicks just going down here. But just about everything else, I think we can dump down here and wait and see what happens with them. Uh, the long-haired slicks, of course, go into the waiting room. I don't know who needs to dig this. Erat or Honza? Okay, let's uh, let, let's encourage that a little bit more, shall we? Oh, so, someone's about ready to drop an egg. That's nice. So we're going to come along to the incubator here. And of course, if I can find it, we're going to set this to long-haired lava. Continuous. Beautiful. Uh, we also need to set up a... A critter checkpoint here. Oh, the egg is down. Beautiful. Something else I want to do, talking of eggs, I want to come over to the shipping and I... It's not shipping, is it? It's rocketry. And I want to get a payload opener down. I reckon over here... Well, where are we going to put it? I don't, I don't know exactly where we're going to put it. Maybe just here. We can get ourselves something from Sherubi. So over here, we've got ourselves a squeaky pufflet egg. This is These are the guys that will eat themselves some... Eat some chlorine, output some uh, bleach stone. You know what? I've got a bit of a chlorine problem over here. The canister filler is already full of chlorine. The pipes are full. I can just run it all up and dump it into space, but I would much rather, much, much rather have a squeaky puffed farm here. Uh, of course, we're going to need a targeting beacon. I'm not sure if I want to make it out of iron. 
Uh, I can make it out of copper. Beautiful. Let's cancel that. Okay, copper down. Beautiful, beautiful. I would, yeah, we need to be able to fire stuff at this planet. So there we go. That's that. Okay, targeting beacon down. I'm not sure how well this is going to work because this is already full of stuff, right? Let's have a look down here. We've got an eight point. Can we, can we bring this right down to nothing? Is that something we can do? Ah, two... Can we, can we lower it less than that? Because that means we're going to need two eggs. Hmm. We could probably just send two, two eggs, right? Oh, look, we got, we got, okay, we can do it, we can do it, we can do it. So over here, if I go critter egg and where are you? Squeaky puffed egg. Low priority. Oh, wait, we, we got, we got other things being moved as well. Let's stop that. Okay, turn the eggshells off. We need to change this guy's target. I don't mind... Yeah, Tyranu, brilliant. Uh, I don't mind sending a few eggshells over there by accident. That That's cool. Okay, Hicks has popped one in. That's that's crazy. Okay, ooh, what, what just went there? All right, I've already done the change of change of target so that's probably the eggshells leaving all right that's that's fine that's fine we need to get these guys there's only one kilogram there oh no okay i know i know what i'm gonna do but that wasn't what i wanted to do okay so that's all the eggshell gone we're gonna need one more egg i think looking at it so let's go for the prince puffed egg if we can please Hicks has been with us since the very beginning of the game. He's still going around proving himself to be useful. We've really got to fill in that little bit of ladder segment there. And this should hopefully be it. We're going to put the puffler egg in there. And this should fire out some. Okay, that's interesting. I'm kind of willing to let that die. Let's uh, let's turn this off. I mean, Prince Pufflets, they're not, they're not very hard to get hold of. All right, having a look at the star map, things should... Uh, are they already arrived? They might have already arrived. Oh, there they are. There they are. They're a, a minute and a half to go. Okay. Oh, eight seconds, nine seconds. We've got a lot of stuff here. Thankfully, thankfully, uh, most of the stuff that will come out of here can be put through the teleporter. We got a problem. Ah, okay. So we need to go to skills. And who are we going to overburden with skills? Obviously, Erat. I mean, why, why would we not? Carrying, tinkering, carrying, engineering, and mechatronics. Brilliant. Maybe at some point we'll bring um, Sir Dr. Captain Subs back to this asteroid. It feels like his ancestral home, so we'll bring him here at some point. And then he, he can be the mechatronics guy for here as well, getting all stressed out over this way. <laughs> okay, first, arrivals have arrived. Yep, you heard me. Arrivals are arriving. Uh, this is all just eggshell, though. This is all just eggshell. Taking a quick look at the, the map. Seven seconds... 50, uh, 50 seconds. Okay, th these are all times that I can wait. Especially when we have such wonderful animations to watch whilst it's going down. Waiting for people to come along and do these, but I've got a feeling, yeah, number 77, that's not something that's going to just happen on its own, is it? I'm going to go, hey, can we have all the construction errands and can we make them the most important things ever? Okay, conveyor rail has been put in place. Are we going to get a whole bunch of lovely equipment out of there? No. What happened to the eggshells? I ever so slightly feel like we might have just watched the bug, but maybe I just missed it happen. Maybe we just missed it. Okay, here, here's the payload with it. I was getting a little bit worried then. I was like, wait, where are the puffed eggs? But yeah, there, there they are. Uh, we, we need to get them out of there relatively quickly and then dump them down in this hole, I think. We, we probably need to seal this up. There's no way we're going to be able to turn this into a, into a stables. I believe it needs some... Doesn't, doesn't say what it does and doesn't need like no no industrial machinery can I can I just put a grooming station in here and we're good okay Honda has the package this is the most important thing going down right now we got to make sure that this is something that happens we're gonna grab grab it into the payload opener I like the way that the camera is following specifically Honda even during his animation this means that the uh, camera's tied to this model rather than the uh, idea of where Honda is uh, and now we should be seeing yes here they come two squeaky puffed eggs brilliant we need to move them down here somehow and uh, we need to do it a little bit faster than what we're doing oh, we need to deal with this ethanol as well let's just dig through here and I'm sure nothing will go wrong Okay, squeaky puffed egg. Let's just get them over here as quick as possible. People are moving. Honda's moving both of them. Great. They're all up here. And there you are. Brilliant. Oh, okay. Going to pick two of those up. One and two. That's nice. And going to move with a bit of haste over to here just to drop them down. I don't know what the incubation rate is on these two. We should probably try and find out. I wonder where it's popped them. Okay, there they are. Squeaky Pufflet Egg, 35, and a viability of 92, that's pretty good, and 93 and 92. Okay, this, this guy's ready to pop. Great. 
Okay, we've got most of this space opened up. I want to move this gas pipe down below and probably this element sensor to a carbon dioxide one. We want to try and clear everything out. And to that end, I've put a little gas pipe overflow here. When this is full, we're going to let the, carbon, the chlorine back out. Hopefully that's all that happens. Chlorine, yes, great. So any other waste gases that are below, which should hopefully only be carbon dioxide trapped underneath this layer of chlorine, the carbon dioxide will be picked up and scooted over this way to be eaten Oh, I thought it was to be. No, it's 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 off to be vented. Okay, that's fine. I can I can definitely live with the venting. Is this carbon dioxide? Okay, it's gonna drop carbon dioxide down this way to be eaten. Okay, okay, not the most, not the finest way of doing it, but I, I'll take it. I'll take it. So the squeaky pufflet is out and around. I have noticed that the sweeper doesn't quite fill up the whole space. That's a bit of a shame, but I'm sure it's something we can deal with. As long as he can reach this storage bin, that is the main thing we want to do. All of the bleach stone that gets produced by this squeaky pufflet should hopefully fall somewhere within here. One of these bunch of tiles here. Uh, that should hopefully mostly get picked up. Any that doesn't will get just vented out as chlorine, no problem, uh, and dumped in this storage bin over here. Eventually this is going to fill up, so we might want to replace this for an automatic dispenser of course i am currently out of iron ore or any ore uh, at all but that is literally what these rusty oxidizers are doing it's producing iron ore for me as well as the chlorine that's pretty cool you might notice that i'm building some weird setup over here i want to maintain access underneath but i also want to be able to let the oxygen flow down and around uh kind of get the oxygenation area going pretty well around here it's not as good as we could do with so i'm gonna build a little break in in the uh, in the wall here just to make sure that the chlorine does flow all the way down always a little bit worried about a little bit of gas bubbling up and over yeah yeah it could happen maybe we'll add another tile to this like so i think like so we could have also dropped a bit of liquid but everyone will be complaining about the uh, the wet feet if we do that then i'm just going to carry on this ladder down here and we'll gain access maybe through these i'm going to open this area up for the automatic dispenser as well this should then give us room to put a doorway through here let's 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 figure this out actually let's put a manual airlock there and see what happens hopefully all the water being emptied out should oh thanks very much randomers uh, that's access given down here pretty good. All right. Yeah, we'll, we'll see what's happening with that Right, so I wanted oxygen flowing down here Mostly I want oxygen flowing down here to feed my long-haired uh, Selixters, but the long-haired Selixters you might notice have a bit of trouble They're all starving right now if we call up the gases call up the gases uh, You can see that they're actually flooded in carbon dioxide and natural gas I've got this pump down here working away. This guy's looking for carbon dioxide. This guy's looking for oxygen If neither of them detect this pump this gas pumps and it's throwing all the way gases out and away i think we might need to build ourselves some airflow tiles underneath to actually make this flow properly but that's no problem there uh you know you might notice that i am sealing this one back up that's because i was wondering how we were going to kill our long head slicksters and of course we're going to starve them in carbon dioxide that's how we're going to do that all of these guys are saying they're overcrowded. I'm not sure why they're overcrowded. I guess we'll just have to uh, get a few of them out. I'm going to bring this down to five critters. Five critters sounds good. We are at the maximum size, maximum 96. I, I really thought molten slicksters didn't need that much space. It doesn't. It never tells you how much room they want in the uh, in the day space here. That's a shame. Not sure if I want to laugh or cry right now. If I hit this auto sweeper, you might notice that this bottom block here is not lit up by the white squares. This is not the intention at all. I think I've made a mistake. We need to deconstruct this. I'm also tempted to actually deconstruct this and put it at the top here and move this rust deoxidizer over by one. Am I tempted? I've already started putting down the orders for that. Let's get the constructions. Let's put those as a high priority. That's kind of going to be a prerequisite of getting everything else up and running, moving that. I think we're just going to take all of this apart and uh, re reorganize everything. Pufflet's going to try and stay in there and we're going to try and not send error. Insane. Honza also having problems. How come? He's the only one with super hard digging. Maybe maybe this was my mistake. We're, we're going to leave them for a moment. In fact, we're going to have to give Errat the power of the mechatronics engineer back because we need to rearrange all this. As I said, where, where, where's the crew? Where, where's the destruction? It, it's night time. Ah. 
So a new day and a new panic to get over with. I feel like we need to make these solid tiles as quick as possible. I kind of feel like I should have dug that one out first. Uh, let, let's see if we can do that, actually. Let's see if we can make this one a P crazy and this one, these two are nine. See what happens and then we'll, we'll turn these ones up as well. I was a little bit worried about this. Uh, what's going to happen to my gases? Okay, so far, so good. That, that's fine. That, okay, we can, we can definitely live with that. We've got to keep the chlorine here. I don't mind a little bit of carbon dioxide sinking down. I didn't realize there was liquid. I wonder what liquid it is. Uh, it does, doesn't matter. We're doing fine. Okay, because Honza's the only one with super hard digging, we've had to also put the priorities right up for these guys here. He, all he wants to do is ranch, and I can't blame him for that. Look, there we go. All they want to do is ranch. Uh, that, that's literally what we made them for, so that's that's fine. Uh, but we, we need to move some oxygen around, and the reason that I'm so panicking about it right now, we've got like, let's call it 2,000 kilos of oxygen at the top here. But down below, what have we got? Oh, about 100, kilo, uh, 100 grams, sorry, 100 grams. And the the mere act of having a hundred grams of carbon dioxide is pushing all of that back and in fact there's like two kilos of carbon dioxide on this side of the door so we need to be able to equalize the pressure somewhat and this is how we're going to do that as soon as soon as it happens I'm really hoping when these top ones get taken out we can uh, get someone else in there as well if we do that it should clear some headroom and allow other people in there is, is that gonna happen oh Arat was gonna do some foodings and then he was like no I've got more important things to do and, and he's right he does that's great okay I've got the build order for the automatic dispenser up there and I'm having a look and I think this is the placement we want I've not gone ahead and given anybody the skills yet because they're quite intensive skills for the amount of decor we have kicking around we re <laughs> really do need to fix that at some point though Okay, Arat should be on the job as quick as he can. Okay, that's the auto sweeper down and immediately, immediately please go get scrubbed. Okay, the bleach stone is being picked up and dropped over in the dispenser. Dropping down on the floor, I'm hoping. That that would be great. Yeah, it looks like it's going there. Great. Now, can we tidy all this up without sweeping up the bleach stone? Okay, the only places we can't grab are down here, which I, th I think we should be fine with. We could probably seal this off with a couple of airflow tiles. Okay, so there is a wave of deep blue, wow, aqua blue moving down this way. I think we might want to turn these tiles into some mesh tiles just so they don't lock the place up okay cool we, we do have enough stuff to make it that's that's good it's only mildly worrying well with honza going around ranching and erat being in the cleaning i suppose the only thing we can do is watch randomers today he's got around gonna go around and do a few builds to be done we've got some ladders over there some bleach stone to knock out so we can get some decent airflow going the airflow is pretty good though we're up to a kilogram over this side i'm hoping that it'll start pushing back down i mean it, it, it's trying but eek <laughs> One thing that I might do is we've got this oxygen line coming from the main base and most of these atmospheric sensors are set up to to only let gas out if we drop below uh, a, a kilogram, which is getting close. But I think what I might do is try and set up a gas pump over here, pulling away most of the oxygen from this if we can actually make sure we get that. So if we put that there, uh, have ourselves a gas pipe going across the top here. Maybe, maybe we'll come down and through this way. And the trick is obviously going to be maintaining forward flow. So if I put this bridge here and then snip that, we need to get this fixed as soon as possible. But this gas pump now should take priority over the gas coming from the base because it, this will only let across the bridge if this isn't a full packet in the line, a full oxygen packet. And that way we can then set up another one of these regulated air vents in the uh, in the long-haired slickster's place. I, th I think that's a good plan. I think in all in all, it's a strong plan. As soon as everything that we've put down gets built. And back to watching randomers do most of the work building the pipe work network. Great. Oh, I suppose, I suppose some power wouldn't go amiss for this. Okay, I think it's working. We're putting packets of 500 in there. I would have preferred thousands, but that's fine. When it backs up, it will uh, stack up nice and clear. Uh, we've got a chlorine detector, whereupon it will drop the chlorine down the hole. There's not much chlorine left, but uh, that's, that's what two... Uh, squeaky puffs will do for you. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to sustain two of them. We'll, we'll see what happens there. We will see what happens. Uh, speaking of, oxygen is flowing down. We're also throwing oxygen out of this gas vent here, and we're not quite sustaining 
decent amounts of oxygen. Maybe we've got too many of these long haired slicksters here. Maybe that's a problem. But we are moving them over to this chamber over here. So that, that should help. They are currently cramped. There's too many of them in here. So moving them across would be very... No, 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 no one's going to do that. Okay, let, let's just quickly... Okay, just moving the one seemed to be good enough. All right, great. Now I wonder how long this guy's going to survive in here. 10 cycles. He's going to last 10 cycles. That's a, a little long if you ask me, but we will have more and more and more coming in there as we go. Okay, the oxygen issue has kind of got itself sorted. You can see we're getting a sustainable amounts up here. These guys are just eating their fill and keeping us around 600. I'm okay with 600. People don't complain about that. This guy, he, he's still starving. It's going to take a while. Okay, we've got two more bits of a new conveyor system going in back here. I got a little bit annoyed of having to sweep up the long-haired lava eggs to be put into this critter egg transportation unit over here. I'm even going to go as far as destructing this, and we need Eric to come along and to build this whole system. I have got a critter sensor here. It is seeing when we're over six critters. It will then turn this auto sweeper on, telling it that it can put the long-haired lava egg, you know what, I'm just going to click all those just in case, into the conveyor loader. The conveyor loader then fires them all along. Along this line of rail here look at that beautiful beautiful and it should now just drop in the bottom and we wait for these guys to incubate we do have another guy up here incubating as well this should all work out well for keeping this lot these guys here topped up and keep producing eggs which all get put down here and still waiting for this guy to die seven and a half cycles seven and a half will he produce an egg though this is quite no he's not going to produce an egg i wonder how i could i bet if i groomed him he'd be fine about it i'm not going to but i bet it would ah uh, he's starving that rips his uh happiness right down by 10. Yeah. Also, the amount of carbon dioxide up here has now got to three, maybe four kilos. And these guys down here just cannot get the micrograms, micrograms. So this gas vent here, I have gone ahead and co-opted this gas pump that used to be for checking natural gas, but instead it is now checking for carbon dioxide on both sides, uh, whereupon it will put it straight into this line. It comes all the way down here and feeds it direct to the molten slicksters. Hopefully that will be good enough. Oh, look, these guys are cramped as well. Oh, hello, little morph. What are you doing here? Let's attack this and also, I don't know, we need to do something to make this clean. I'm just, I'm just going to stick it up to nine and see if that helps. Polluted oxygen, though. Mm, I forgot they made that. Morbs don't produce enough polluted oxygen to feed a pufflet, but uh, I, th I think I think they're pretty good for putting the deodorizers in front of and having an infinite infinite clay machine. Hmm. Anyway, that's not what we're doing. Food. Randomers might not quite be doing this exactly as I intended, but it's good enough. So we've got some salt being taken over to here. I was kind of hoping they would pick all the stuff up. I didn't want to tick sweep only because, of course, I might dig up some salt that I don't know where it is and don't know how to sweep it but of course it means all the, the salt that did get swept is all in the bottom of this pile here and now randomers is moving it out of that pile over this way i'm, I'm fine with that i'm fine we'll, we'll just let it play out and then and then when we start emptying this out new salt will get be picked up Okay, next to each one of these producers, I've put a storage bit. Sorry, we're all the way over on Shrubi. We've just been doing a Tyrannu over here, do, dealing with the carbon dioxide and stuff. But as we have a little bit of time to wait for all these systems to bubble down, I thought we'd come over to Shrubi and start dealing with some of the metals that we made last time. I've put down some storage bins next to all the producers, as I say, and this is going to still uh, store as much as two tons, 20 tons, 20 tons of gold. Uh, also up here, we're going to be storing 20 tons of aluminium. This is because over at our interplanetary launcher i have asked for or i will be asking sorry for let's come down here the aluminium and the gold at number seven to be done here to be sent through the reason they're at number seven the reason they're at lowers is because these guys are on nine so they store them the materials here first making sure that shirubi has the materials that they are themselves producing before sending it back to the home planetoid Okay, so after all these construction supplies, we've got a bunch of disinfects, then some fabricates, but down here we've got the storage of the gold. Okay, that's pretty cool. And then this one, a little bit further down, should be the storage of more gold in the other places. So that should be everything set up and ready to go. Let's go back to Taranu. The reason that I'm doing this is I want to drop a steel pump into this petroleum down here so that we can fire it up. Ooh excuse me fire it up towards the petroleum generator over this side believe it or not this one is the one uh we could just jump over in fact we don't need to jump over but we are going to jump over like this and pull a pull a pipe down where, where do we want it to come from it's from this corner here 
but I am a bit short of the steel that I need. If you have a look, we need 400. I've got 185. I could wait for all the iron ore to get delivered and then all the lime to get delivered and stuff like that. But what I'm going to do instead is deconstruct this one because the temperatures are not too extreme up here. I'm going to make one out of gold amalgam instead. No, I'm not. I don't have any. Ah. Well, 75 is still quite low compared to the other temperatures around here. So we'll see. Ah, I'd really like some gold amalgam. Oh, I might. I might literally not have any here. Okay. I have a feeling we have some more gold amalgam over here than we do elsewhere. Let me just find it. This being Sharubi, the place we were just at. Raw mineral. Here we go. No, not more raw mineral. More raw metal. Metal ore. That's what I'm looking for. I quite often get all those mixed up. Oh well. Uh, let's let's just go. Hey, do this please, and let's see. Let's see what gets delivered. It it could be anything at this point. It is gold amalgam though. Okay, that's that's pretty cool. That's very cool, in fact. Well, there's a lot of eggshell that didn't get picked up, but we're now also sending a lot of gold uh, amalgam. This is brilliant, so all I'm going to do is turn this back down to uh, seven. Let's see how that works out for us. Uh, but more importantly, if we come to the star map, where are they? They're the interplanetary payloads. They are on route 30 seconds, 40 seconds, 50 seconds. All right, cool. Uh, let's, let's wait and see where they come down. I say that as if I don't know where I put my own targeting beacon. Right, what's in this one? Gold amalgam. Go, go, go. Well, I mean, is anybody going to go, go, go? How do we know? Got some falling straight down. I literally watched that one fall all the way down here. That's that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. No, oh, Ash is grabbing it. Okay, this is good. This puts everybody all in the same spot. This should now be open, and we should get some gold falling out of there. All right, beautiful. Now, with that, I want to come up to our conveyor loader, and we're going to send it once more over to another place. Well, do we need to do this? We have a teleport cave, but no, we, we need to do this. Jonesy actually immediately on the business here of moving the gold amalgam around. I am about that. It should just go straight in there. 600. It's not it's not going to be enough to go, but oh look, we've got we've got 50 of steel already. Hmm, 130. That's sorry. So we we only need a little bit more. Like literally five grams of something, please. Okay, there's another hundred of steel. That wasn't quite what I was after, but it will, it will do. It will do. So that should be more stuff heading in another direction from here. Look at that going back. Oh no! Oh no! I'm sending them to Sharubi. Ah. Why are you going to Sharubi? I want you. Ah. Ah, no. Well, I guess we'll just let that go in a loop. There, there's nothing but what I should have done. Let, let's stop this. Let's stop that. To turn, turn that off there. What we should have done is put it on over here. Here, of course, being this weird teleport input. Uh, that, can we get people to come over here without bringing us food? I don't know. Okay, it was quite the journey, but we've got 600 kilos of gold amalgam passed over here. We've also got a few uh, barbecue coming over from Yakil, just to make sure we can keep going until we can make our own barbecue. Of course, these guys, hundreds of thousands of calories over here, mostly gristle berries and barbecue going really well. Okay, back to Turanu. We've got the materials being dumped down there. Hopefully, Random Random is going to come along and grab the gold amalgam. Beautiful. Let's speed this up a little bit and wait until this is done. Who's at 50%? Honza, my friend. Uh, we, we're having troubles all around, actually. But this gold amalgam liquid pump, 125 degrees, it boils over. Hopefully, we'll never be seeing that. We're trying to keep it down lower than that, apart from down here, where we like to keep it nice and high for our molten slicksters. Grr, there's water here. How? Back on Sharubi with the uh, puffs and the gold and everything like that. I have been putting a great big long line coming in another direction here. I'm going to chop that there and I'm going to chop this one here. This is our polluted water line. It's being destroyed here but that's okay because it's going to come down, follow this line and then get dropped to be making a whole bunch of polluted water. A polluted air. Oxygen is actually what it's making. But it will fill down here. It will overflow to this liquid pump whereupon it will get picked back up and any excess water that isn't used to make polluted oxygen then gets scrubbed. I don't know if we're making enough water to make this a viable option, but we're, we're going to try. We're going to try. This will probably be something that I have to let you know how it turns out over several episodes, because it's, it's going to be quite, quite a long play. Talking of long play, we've got a whole bunch of eggshells in here. Four tons of them, in fact. That is a lot of eggshells. Unfortunately, we are running out of rad bolts. I didn't, I didn't think, well, I, I should have known that rad bolts were going to be the problem. Why is this power situation also a problem here? What's gone on here here's the problem okay this this is not great we should we should definitely have a a battery somewhere 
maybe several. Okay, new batteries are down. They're quite away from over here, but hopefully this will keep the uh, the generation rolling overnight. The fact that we lost all of those is kind of annoying. <laughs> oh, I think my dyslexia has hit me some point during this episode. So I was like, oh no, we're at maximum rune size in this place. It must have been 69, not 96. Ah, that's kind of funny though. I'll take it. I'll take it. That's fine. It's no problem. Okay, extreme measures. We're going to take down this polymer press. Uh, it's made out of steel. I don't think it needs to be. We're at 50 degrees. Let's make another one out of, uh, grab this, gold amalgam. I've got enough gold amalgam. Let's do it. With that single bit of steel being put into place, Suddenly, oh, there we go. We got we got some actual power underway as well. Unrefined power at that. Great. But I think with the polymer press up and running again, we've got a little bit of food supply underway. Where's where's our guy here? He He's probably... Oh, are they able to eat here? I don't think they're able to eat here. Let me have a look at the gas. No, they're not able to eat here. That guy must have died already, which makes sense as we've got barbecue underway. And I think with that, I am going to say thank you very much for joining me for this adventure, ladies and gentlemen. How is this already overheating? What, are you kidding? me are you kidding me overheat temperature of 125 and you're like yeah let me just be 160 for no apparent reason let's see if we can't temperature shift play i was just about to do my outro i don't know if you could tell that but let's see if we can't temperature shift plate our way to success here okay one temperature shift plate down let's see if it's pulling down the test not pulling down the temperature at all why is this just climbing higher than the steel one ever did okay they seem to be doing a little bit of work here obviously it's shut down and uh well oh, man we're gonna have to rip this apart and put it back up but i think with that i'm gonna say thank you very much for joining me for this adventure ladies and gentlemen i will see you guys next time when maybe we'll take care of some of the decor around here it does seem pretty outrageous but i will see you then when we're gonna do that bye